In this clip, I will be unboxing and reviewing the Dela Rowney Georgian Water Mixable Oil 10 Tube Set. I will also talk about the pros and cons of water mixable oils and demonstrate them in a small painting. So first I'm going to talk about the colours that are included in this set. You have titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, cerulean hue, French ultramarine, viridian hue, yellow ochre and burnt umber. Now I did notice that there wasn't a black so I ordered a separate black from Cobra and because I always use titanium buff I'd also order titanium buff. However, because there was a burnt sienna in the previous Georgian oil set that I ordered I assumed that there was one and I use this for my skin tone so on top of the set that I had and ordering the black I then ha had to order the burnt sienna so just be warned that there is not a burnt sienna it's burnt umber in this set at time of release. Now on the back of the packaging it says that the Georgian water mixable oil colours offers artists the possibility of experiencing oil painting without the need for solvent based mediums. An alternative to traditional oils, the balanced range of 40 vibrant colours can be thinned, mixed and washed using water and as such is ideal for use indoors and in the classroom environment. All Georgian water mixable oil colours offer high levels of light fastness, pigment load and durability. The viscosity and smooth texture of the colours out of the tube mirror traditional oil colours and can be used for impasto techniques or thinned down with water. They can create wash effects similar to watercolours. Surface dry between 5 to 7 days and no colour shift from wet to dry. So I'm going to test out some of these techniques in this demonstration. So why use water mixable oils? Water mixable oils have been around for about 30 years and as word of mouth and popularity has increased they are becoming more popular and more easy to get hold of. The main difference between the two paints is that water mixable paints have a binder which means it's water soluble. If however you wanted to make them more like traditional oils you could use them with your usual oil mediums or dilutants of choice. But if you are more sensitive to oil paints, have medical conditions, little ones or poor ventilation, you may find that water mixable oils are a great alternative. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the colours that I use for making skin tones and I've started to mix them with the palette knife. I found that the texture of the oil paint was really creamy and it was very similar to oil paint. There was also the same odour that you get with oil paint which I was surprised about because I wasn't expecting to get that. I wasn't expecting to get the similar texture but certainly I wasn't expecting to get that strong odour. I thought that would have gone because of this mention of not having the toxicity. So I'm now mixing my colours. They mix in the very same way as you would with the oil paint and I'm just making sure that I'm getting my tones right. I find that I'm, when I'm mixing oils I find it easier to mix with a palette knife and I'm mixing it in the same way when I am doing this for this demonstration because using the paintbrush can be quite messy. So I'm now applying the mixture that I have made to my canvas. This is just a piece of canvas that I've cut up and you could use canvas paper if you're just doing a test because I would suggest you test these out before you go on to putting it onto a final painting and I did make a big mistake to begin with because I like to put quite a thin wash on to begin with I did add some water to the paint but I added a little bit too much water here as you can see it's quite thin it's too thin so I then had to make sure that the next time I didn't add as much water so when you are adding water just be very careful that you don't add too much water because if you do it becomes too watery. It's not quite the same as adding um, a thinner like terps because what will happen is it just goes too much the other way. So just be mindful of that and now I'm adding on more paint on top and I found that it took me a few goes to get an idea of the amount of water that I should add and it's just a minimal amount but once you get the hang of it it's perfectly fine 
and I'm now building up some of my darker tones around the eye you can see here still I've added a tiny bit too much water so it's a real learning curve with regards to adding those quantities of water when I added darker tones on the right hand side I used quite a dry brush and when I say dry brush I mean I applied just a tiny amount of the dark colour and I found that that was more a more effective technique when trying to use these water soluble oil paints and again I tried to use this approach when I was adding the dark tones around the eye and the eyelid So when it came to adding details like the pupil and the eyelashes I used the paint directly from the tube because it needed to be quite a thick consistency for those detailed areas. So would I recommend using Dela water mixable oils? Certainly, especially if you are in a household where there are younger children or you're planning to use them in a classroom with children because you don't have the toxicity of the chemicals and I really like the fact that you don't have the mess of the turpentine and the white spirit so I will certainly be using them again. I found that they were really easy to work with and I'm looking forward to producing more work with them in the future. Check out the description below if you'd like to find out more about the products used in today's clip. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to see future content like this. Check out the playlist above if you'd like to see more reviews and check out the playlist below if you'd like to learn more portraits techniques. <laughs>